Welcome to another Coding Like Mad MATLAB video. In today's tutorial, we're going to be talking about anonymous function handles. Anonymous function handles are an advanced MATLAB concept which is akin to Lambda functions in Python or C++ or void function handles in C. These are uh, an advanced concept because they allow you to employ additional abstraction in your code. Instead of just having functions and variables, you can now have variables which are in fact functions. You can pass a function to another function in order to operate on it. So this is a pretty crazy idea, but it's also incredibly powerful. So let's take a look at how this works. So let's imagine that I wanted to store in a variable f, which is going to become my anonymous function handle, the cosine function. So I have now created my first anonymous function handle, and it points to the cosine function. This is super simple. I just plug in uh, a value that I'm interested in, say 1, and you can see that I get the same value out of my anonymous function handle. Where this gets powerful, though, is that I'm able to use this as a variable. So let's, for example, try to integrate it. We're going to use the integral function, which takes as input a variable f, which is our anonymous function handle, and we're going to integrate it between 0 and pi over 2. And as you can see, we get 1, which is the expected value. Likewise, if I go 0 to pi, I get essentially 0 up to floating point precision. So, uh, of course, if I'm just putting in cosine, this isn't that exciting an idea, but I can use this to build compound functions. So in this way, I can actually build on this layer of abstraction as much as I want. Let's start out uh, with something pretty straightforward. So the most common way that you'll actually see anonymous function handles defined is using this at notation. So for instance, I can create uh, an anonymous function handle of the exponential function, which is having a decaying exponential, which takes as input the x variable. You'll notice I've explicitly labeled what the input should be. Um, this is going to become important in a minute. So I've created an anonymous function handle pointing to an exponential. So of course you can directly imagine uh, plotting this. So I'm going to give a value xval equals, just for convenience sake, uh, the values between 0 and 10 in intervals of uh, 0 0.1, and we can create a simple plot. So you can see we've got this exponential decay. Let's try building a more complicated function though. Where this really becomes powerful is where we start mixing anonymous function handles with each other and operating on them. Let's begin by using this modulate function. As you can see, uh, it takes as input a function handle f and a set of values to evaluate it at. So we can uh, just repeat this process of what we just did, but instead of plugging in uh, f uh, directly, we can now put f into the modulate function. And what you can see is that this turns the value of f on and off with a square wave function every, uh, uh, every single unit along the number line. So another powerful feature of an anonymous function handle is the ability to make an interface. Remember I said before that uh, that at notation was extremely powerful. Uh, let me give you an example of us uh, abusing it. So I can, for instance, create a new anonymous function handle g, which is going to be equal to modulate uh, of f and x. Now you'll notice that g only takes as input x. So even though modulate requires both a function handle and a variable, I've used uh, the anonymous function handle structure to create an interface between g and modulate where the anonymous function handle is storing some of the arguments to the function. This is a really powerful technique. And you can see that when I use it, I still get 
the exact same plot out. So nothing changes here. We'll close it and rerun it. There you go. Nothing changes. Uh, and of course, we can do the same tricks before with integration, for example, if you wanted to see um, me integrate uh, our new function handle g uh, on uh, 0 to 10. Another really useful trick with anonymous function handles is actually uh, using them to standardize parts of your code. So this is a more practical example for people who are doing academic work and you need to have the same style across a large number of figures. So we can use anonymous function handles to create an interface as follows. So I've already created this function. I'm going to call it plot nice. And basically what it's going to do is make a relatively nice plot of uh, the function f on a given range. You can see it takes as input uh, a set of values to evaluate it at, a function uh, handle, uh, a title, an x label, and a y label. So we're going to start by plotting the sine function between 0 and 2 pi. You can see we get a very nice plot out. And if I repeat this with the cosine function, I get a very nice plot out. And the cool part about this is that it doesn't really matter uh, what I'm doing, I just get nice plots out. Um, and if I want to add one, it's very easy to do. But if I felt the need, for example, to go to, let's say, size 30 title font for some reason, then I can just rerun them and I have a different font size. That didn't seem like it actually changed the font size. Let's try changing this font size. Oh my god. Okay, yeah, the font size is being applied to the title. Good to know. Okay, so as you can see, we basically can adjust our uh, plotting on the fly for many different plots. And this is especially useful for people who are uh, doing things like dissertations and theses. So I've just told you, I think, why anonymous functions are powerful and why people who use languages like Python abuse them a lot. Um, let me kind of finish the video off with a couple words of caution, maybe three points I'd make. Uh, the first point I would make is anonymous function handles can be difficult to use well. Um, in particular, when you are debugging them, uh, it adds an additional layer. The code you're debugging, the place where the crash is happening, can be inside the anonymous function handle. And while MATLAB does kind of handle this, some weird things can happen. Uh, and for this reason, you do want to be pretty careful about making sure that you can reliably generate the same function handles uh, when you're testing your code. Uh, a second issue that comes up is uh, just plain security. Anonymous function handles, by their nature, let you run arbitrary code. Now, that's not such a big deal if you have control over the system being used and you don't have anything secure on there and you're the only one that's going to run the code. So if I'm plotting things for my dissertation, if they have access to my code, they have access to the whole computer. No one cares, right? But if you're running a piece of industrial software, let's say you've put together a demo that has to run um, where it may be even partially unsupervised for a bit, well, now you have to think to yourself a little bit, did I create a security hole that uh, is maybe problematic? Uh, and especially uh, if it's a system with sensitive data on it, this can be something you want to think about a little bit. Um, and then uh, the last point I would make is that not everyone should be using anonymous function handles for everything. Um, this is a really shiny toy and everyone wants to play with it once they really get it, but one of kind of the, the remarkable things about watching people use this is I often get to see uh, the next person who looks at the code and sometimes that next person has trouble understanding that code. And the reason is that by their nature, anonymous function handles generate harder to read code. Uh, it might seem a little weird to you because after looking at this code, you might be thinking, wow, I can make such clean, simple code. And that's true. Your code will be cleaner, it will be shorter, it will be simpler. But it may not be easier for another person to read. 
So something to keep in mind is that just because something is more elegant doesn't necessarily mean that it is more maintainable. That said, they are the mark of an expert MATLAB user, and uh, I have been pretty much universally pleased every time that I've seen a well-written anonymous function handle code. So with that note, uh, I'm going to close out this video. Thank you so much for spending some time with us today, guys. I hope that you learned something. We're going to be doing a few more videos uh, this month. Uh, actually, we're trying to ramp things up again. It's been a couple years since the channel's been active uh, in releasing videos, so uh, I'm excited about what's coming up. We have a lot of machine learning stuff, and we actually have uh, some video game AI stuff, which I think is really cool. So uh, I hope you will stick around. Um, if you like our stuff, feel free to tell us in the comments below. If you thought it was stupid, tell us that too. Anyway, you guys have a great day. I will see you next time.